Alright guys, so over the years in Formula 1 we have never been low on second drivers. They've always been around good drivers but never good enough to beat their teammates. And top teams love these guys because they can consistently score points and podiums, help win the Constructors' Championship or score as high as possible in the Constructors' Championship but not interfere with the number one driver of the team when it comes to the Drivers' Championship. Now when a driver enters a team, they generally never go into it with the thought of being a second driver. F1 is an ultra competitive sport, the pinnacle of motorsports. So you could imagine that each driver you see on track believes that they either do or will have a chance of winning the driver's title. Even if you think very low of a certain driver, yes, even they at some point probably thought that they have what it takes to win a championship or at the very least beat their teammate. But when said driver unofficially becomes the second driver of the team, all that confidence in themselves and also a lot of the competitiveness is stripped right away. You can see this in many second drivers throughout the years, such as Valtteri Bottas. Bottas is definitely one of the more prominent second drivers we've seen during the last few years since he was essentially Hamilton's right-hand man during his domination of the turbo hybrid era. In the beginning, it seemed as though Valtteri might have been able to pose a threat to Hamilton's shot at winning the title. The two would actually have battles on track, but sadly, eventually Bottas was put in his place and although he would have his moments, he wouldn't ever be as competitive again throughout his Mercedes stint. So, I think I've made it clear that no driver wants to be the second driver of a team. Daniel Ricciardo went as far as leaving a top team like Red Bull to not suffer that fate. But, of course, we know where that got him. But there's one particular case of a driver suffering this fate that I personally think is worse than most others. And that is in the case of the Brazilian driver Rubens Barrichello. Now obviously I'm going to go ahead and say that Barrichello was not a bad driver, in fact he was pretty great. He started his Formula 1 career with Jordan back in 1993 at the young age of 20 after having a very solid junior career. But sadly most of his time with the team up until 1995 was plagued with unreliability. But he did have his moments to shine, such as when he almost scored his first podium at the 1993 European Grand Prix. He drove a brilliant drive in the wet, but his car ran out of fuel with just six laps to go. However, the next year he did manage to score his first podium at the Pacific Grand Prix, and also he once again managed to show off his great pace in the rain when he took his first pole position at Spa. In 1995, Jordan switched to more reliable Peugeot engines and in 1996 also signed a more experienced Martin Brundle to replace Eddie Irvine since he was headed to Ferrari. Barrichello quite noticeably beat Brundle that season and I forgot to mention that he also beat Eddie Irvine in 93, 94 and 95. So during his four years at Jordan, Rubens always beat his teammates. He went on to do that again at Stewart, beating every teammate up until 1999. In the year 2000, Ferrari signed Barrichello to partner the one and only Michael Schumacher. Now remember what I said about having confidence stripped away as a second driver? Yeah, this is where it started for Rubens Barrichello. He was beaten quite significantly in 2000 and it remained that way up until he left Ferrari for Honda in 2006. Arguably his best season at Ferrari was in 2004 where he was yet again beaten by Michael Schumacher but he did manage second place in the Drivers' Championship and was quite far ahead of Jensen Button in third. As if being beaten for six years in a row wasn't bad, when Barrichello left Ferrari for Honda he was beaten by his teammate Jensen Button for two out of the three years. In 2008, Barrichello scored a victory over his teammate and placed 14th in the championship with 11 points, whereas Button only scored 3 and he placed 18th in the championship. I think this was a well needed victory for Rubens after being beaten by his teammates for so long. While in that sense 2008 was good for Barrichello, it was short lived because in 2009, Honda became a legendary team we've all come to know and love, Braun GP. Now I won't get into the details of how Braun GP came to be in this video but it is a very interesting topic and there's some great videos on YouTube covering that already but quickly I'd like to also just say if you enjoyed this video so far please consider liking and subscribing to help with the growth of this channel and with that said let's continue. Now. 2009 can be seen as both a win and a loss for Rubens Barrichello. On one hand, yes, he did perform well throughout the season, but that's about where it ends for the good stuff because he performed well, yes, but sadly not well enough. His teammate, on the other hand, Jensen Button, of course, won the championship that season, and I think that's got to hurt. The teammate you managed to beat the season before won the championship you had a potential chance at winning, but at the same time, he was a part of a team that made history. 
Sure, you could look at it in a negative light, but if you shift the perspective just a little bit, you'll realize that Rubens was partly responsible for one of the most crazy Constructors' Championship stories in Formula 1 history, and that cannot be taken away from him. Apart from just being a great driver, Rubens also showed that he was a great guy off track. You could see it in his reactions on the podium that he raced his heart out and that's why fans loved him so much. I guess the whole point of this video was to shine a bit of a light on a driver that I personally think has raced in the shadows of other drivers for a long time and while maybe he wasn't good enough to win a championship himself, I don't think he's always gotten the recognition he's deserved. He's had great performances throughout his career and he showed what a great driver he could be on his day. But also at the same time, I wanted to show the harsh reality of being the second driver of the team during your peak years as a racer. This video was a lot more focused on Rubens Barrichello, of course, but there are more great second drivers out there who deserve more recognition, such as Valtteri Bottas or Eddie Irvine, to name a few, who have just sadly been overshadowed by better teammates throughout their careers. But yeah, that's about it guys. If you want to add anything or have a different view on things, please do so in the comments below. It really helps out with the algorithm. Also, if you did enjoy this video at any point at all, please consider liking and subscribing. I really want to grow this channel to be something bigger and doing so will go a long way in helping. But really guys, thank you all so much for watching. And on that note, I hope you all have a blessed night and I'll catch you all next time.